Hi everybody, this is Julian from AWS and in this video I would like to introduce you to another SageMaker capability that was launched yesterday at reInvent and this one is SageMaker Feature Store. So as you can guess, SageMaker Feature Store lets you store your machine learning features following uh, feature engineering steps on your raw data for online use and offline use. Okay, so let me show you how to get started. As you would expect, this is fully integrated in, in Studio, and uh, you can use the UI to create and store your features, and of course you can use the SageMaker SDK. And I'll show you a little bit of both. Before we do this, I need to introduce some terminology. So features are grouped in a feature group. Okay, so a feature group is just uh, an object that represents engineered features coming from a data source. Okay, so how do you define those groups? It's really up to you. Um, you could probably have one feature group per CSV file, per uh, uh, relational database table, you know, anything goes. Uh, as long as you can define a common schema for uh, the, the features in there, it's fine. Okay, so here we're going to work with uh, CSV files and we'll have one feature group per CSV file. Okay, so inside those feature groups, we have uh, the actual feature records, okay? So feature records are basically the engineered version of your data set rows, right? So let's say we work with CSV data to begin with. We have a CSV file, we have rows and columns. So each row in the CSV file goes through data processing and feature engineering steps, okay? And each one of those rows becomes a record, okay? Stored in a feature group, okay? And obviously inside a record, you have um, key value pairs for each column names and column values. Okay, so pretty simple. Uh, we go from columns and rows in a, a columnar data set to a feature group with uh, records and feature names and values inside each record. Okay, that, that's as much as you need to know. Uh, a little bit of terminology before we get started. Okay, so now let's see how we can, uh, how we can do this. So, so of course, this is integrated with SageMaker Studio and you can click through the UI and walk through the different steps here to create your feature groups. Um, but you know, I'd rather use the API. I think it's important to understand the finer details. And once you understand that, you know, it's super easy to use the UI, okay? Here I'm using one of the sample notebooks in the GitHub repository for SageMaker examples. I will put the URL in the video description. The problem we're trying to solve is building a fraud detection model using uh, transaction information and customer information, okay? So it's a binary classification problem and uh, we'll train a model with XJBoost. So the steps here are what you would expect, um, upload uh, the, the process data to uh, S3, okay, create one feature group for identity features, one feature group for transaction features, okay? Write both to the offline store um, for model training and to the online store for prediction, okay? And so we're gonna see this, uh, this workflow here. Yeah. Okay, so let's see how this works. So import the SageMaker SDK, you know, lots of uh, set up here, grab an S3 bucket uh, for the offline data store. We can take a quick look at the data set. So two CSV files, like I said, identity information and transaction information. Okay, so read those CSV files. Uh, we do very basic processing, one not encoding um, categorical features, okay. So that's as much transformation as we do here. Okay, we see the transformed data. Okay, and this is what we want to push to the feature store. Okay, 
So let's see how we can create future groups and ingest that data. Okay, so two future groups, one for identity features, one for transaction features. Okay, so just create a name. And the first thing we need to do is to create feature definitions. Okay, so there's a little bit of code here uh, to do this. Um, it's actually easier if we check the UI. So let's take maybe the feature group here, the transactions, right? So I've already run this uh, again to save some time. And so feature definitions are what you would expect, feature names and feature types. Okay, so it's literally, it's, it's a schema for, for your data source. So okay. we need to build those feature definitions. Uh, if you have a small data set, you can just build them manually. Or if you have a, a larger, uh, more dynamic data set, you can use code similar to this to create. Um, it's basically a list of uh, a Python list of uh, key value pairs, right? With feature name and feature type. Um, in addition to this, you need to pass the name of two columns, and these are super important. So the record identifier uh, feature name. So remember, records are the uh, equivalent of rows in the original uh, source uh, data. And we need one column with a unique ID, okay? Because this is how we're going to access record features when we query the, the stores. Okay, so if you have a unique identifier in there, you know, a primary key or, you know, in this case, a transaction ID, that's good. As long as it's unique to a record, it's all you need. And the second column name we need is basically a timestamp column, okay, because we're going to store the, uh, the, the timestamp for the feature, um, you know, the, the, what, what time that feature was stored. Uh, and you can have uh, multiple uh, multiple versions of that, obviously, over time. And so this lets you find features uh, going back to a certain point in time. So if you, if you iterated on your uh, feature engineering workflows and you have different versions, then uh, using the timestamp, you can go back in time and say, okay, show me the, the state of this data set at whatever point in time. And, and, and you can go and use that. Okay, so pretty useful. Okay, so unique identifier and timestamp. Okay, um, what else do we do here? So we once we've done this, once we've uh, identified those two important columns, and once we have the feature definitions, then we can create the feature groups. Okay, and the feature group is just as simple as this. Uh, what's the uh, what's the location for the offline store? what's the name of the unique id what's the name of the timestamp column and you also want online storage for that group okay so we run those two api calls we wait for the feature groups to be ready of course we can describe them and we can see the feature definitions see that that list of uh, key value uh, pairs here uh, we can see S3 locations. Okay, that's the second one. All right. Okay, so now we've created our groups. Okay, and of course we see them in studio, both of them here. Okay, so now it's time to uh, store something in there. Okay, so let's go back to the notebook and we can just ingest data right very uh, very simply just pass uh, the actual data set itself and um, and it's the it's the easiest way to do it right uh, and it's going to load that uh, data inside your feature group and you can create uh, you can parallelize this uh, with multiple workers so that's uh, that's pretty neat and um, you can also do this uh, record per, you know, on a record basis. Uh, there's a there's a put record API that you can use if you only want to store one record. But here, where it's the initial uh, loadings, so to speak, so we're just loading everything in there. Okay, we do the same for the other um, feature group. Okay, and so 
at this point we have data in the online store and a few minutes later this gets propagated to the offline store as well so of course we can quickly check that data has been ingested so here we can grab uh, one particular record passing its uh, its unique ID okay remember that's the unique identifier for each record that column that we specified earlier and we can say okay give me the features for record number 2990130 okay whatever that is and we can retrieve that okay and you know that's what you would expect the full record with the key value pairs okay um, you can also uh, if you're working with um, Hive or uh, Hadoop or anything uh, you can also get those uh, automatic uh, DDL statements to uh, create external tables in Hive so that you can access your features uh, directly okay in S3 so that's pretty handy nice shortcut you don't have to write that okay and like I said a few minutes later you get your offline store uh, ready okay just waiting for data to propagate there it takes a few minutes and so at this point we have our engineered features in S3 and in the online store okay so now we can use uh, the offline store data to build our data set so in this notebook um, uh, we actually use Athena uh, to do this but um, this is a very nice way uh, to, to do it it could be you could use something much simpler you could just load uh, the, the data from uh, from S3 uh, here they're uh, they're joining uh, those two uh, data sets right they're joining the the customer information and the transaction information to build a data set okay so it's a bit of a more complex example but I think it's very interesting so we run that SQL query in Athena on the uh, on the S3 data, right? Uh, we can visualize the, the result. Okay, and we can filter the columns that we don't want. Yeah, and we can write that back to a CSV file that we use for training. Okay, so that's a, that's a really clever way of doing it. Okay, so now we have a CSV file ready for training okay and the rest is SageMaker business as usual we create an estimator uh, we use the XJBoost algo uh, yeah we've seen this a million times right so it's a binary classification problem we define the training input as that uh, a joined CSV file that we just built and then we go and train okay and again nothing new here okay then we deploy the model okay and once the endpoint is up uh, well we can access the uh, the features in the online store this time and use the engineered features for th this particular record for prediction okay so you could pull engineered features that complete uh, data, you know, coming in a prediction request, or you know, anything goes right. Here we're just getting the full, uh, the full uh, record. You, know, you could just grab a few, uh, a few features that you need, and uh, so call the get record API, right, and then get the actual features that you need for the uh, the prediction. Okay. All right, and uh, we put we do the same for identity features. We kind of put these together, right? And so now we have our prediction request using engineering features, and then we just call predict on the endpoint, and we get results. Okay, and of course, finally we should clean up, and uh, yes, delete the endpoint, and we can delete the feature groups. Okay, so. This is SageMaker Feature Store. Uh, just to sum things up, um, start from raw data, apply pre-processing. Uh, for example, you could use uh, Data Wrangler just like we've used previously. Remember, you can export your uh, Data Wrangler um, uh, steps to a uh, SageMaker Feature Store notebook. 
right? And if you read this, you're gonna see the same thing, creating feature groups, providing the feature definition uh, list, and then uh, running, um, running a processing job that's gonna push the, the features automatically to the feature store. Okay, so nice time saver here. So engineer your data, um, create feature groups with feature definitions, with a unique identifier, with a timestamp column, uh, create feature groups for uh, offline and potentially online uh, usage if you want to, then push your features. Okay, you could use that handy ingest API to load everything in one go, or you can call put record to load individual uh, values. And then you have your offline store in S3, and you can use it in different ways to build your data set. And you have your online features available in Feature Store, and you can query them in real time at very low latency for uh, real time prediction. Okay. All right, well, this is what I wanted to tell you. So this is Feature Store, go and try it. And uh, let me know what you think. I'm happy to uh, uh, listen to your feedback and answer any question that you may have. All right, this is it. Thank you.